there's some Revelator songs that I'm like, man, we got to bring those back. But we've done so many songs and albums. There's like so much to choose from that we, I guess we don't think about it all the time. We need to get you a really good slide player in Nashville and you guys need to cover a Derek Truck song. You know, he told me Susan wrote the song, which he, he was proud of. He said that with great pride. You know, the way you say nice things about your family. <laughs> from the first note with Tedeschi Trucks, they just blow you away. Yes, we will. I wouldn't argue with anyone that said that says that could be my favorite song on on I Am the Moon. He, you know, signs my ticket, and I look over at Susan. I say, Susan, would you sign it too? And she goes, Oh, oh heck yeah! Kevin calls me and was like, Hey man, what are you doing? I was like, Nothing. And he was like, Derek wants to record some tuba stuff. I say, When do you want to do it? And he was like, Let's do it Wednesday. It's midnight Harlem, um, and it just. It caught our attention, man, and we started diving deep, and we're like, okay, uh, we got to see these guys. What's up? Welcome to the unofficial Tedeschi Trucks podcast. This is episode number 147, and I am Adam Choit. To follow the show, it's at Tedeschi Trucks Podcast on Instagram, and uh, please subscribe on YouTube as well. If you're watching, you're already there, so I definitely appreciate that, too. At Adam Choi on Instagram and Twitter. If you'd like to follow me, um, please subscribe on whatever platform you listen to podcasts on. I'll definitely be putting out an audio version of this episode as well in the next couple of days or so, maybe sooner than that. I can get that done. Um, TedeschiTrucksPodcast.com will send you to the link tree with everything related to the show. Uh, AdamChoi.com for all my personal stuff. Um, this was Tedeschi Trucks Band's last show in what the uh continental north america united states until australia later in the month i think march 30th is their first australia show it was in saint augustine florida at the saint augustine amphitheater there was not any tapers there that i know of nothing's come out as far as audio but david flam was so kind to shoot some video and put that on on his youtube channel and facebook whatever so thank you for that so i did see what i see ain't it ain't fair and dreams but we'll get into to the set and the music all that and all that momentarily um yeah i'm still so i but i've been digging into of course all the warner stuff and the beacon stuff and the the virginia stuff and then the carolina stuff so i had plenty of plenty of music to to check out over the last uh few days the last month or so with this band which has been totally on fire and i'm I have a feeling we're going to confirm that they were on fire in saint augustine as well so without further ado, let's bring in uh, Larry James, a uh, returning guest. David Flam, of course, will be here as well. And we got a newcomer, John Davis. How we doing? Good evening. Good evening. Good I see everyone and I hear everyone. Very cool. Excellent. Oh, good hey. to connect uh, with all you guys. And and John, of course, welcome to welcome to the show. Why don't we Why don't we start with you? And I kind of and everyone should tell me where they are and 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 uh, sure. and whatnot and. Uh, but I want to know from from you, John. How did you get into TTB and Derek Susan? What's your kind of like TTB origin story, more or less? I'm, uh, you know, uh, David, uh, my friend David. There, we were just talking about this in the parking lot the other day. I was a late comer. Um, my my son got into rock and roll. I was so proud as I was raising him, and he comes to me one day and he rattles off these guitarist names, and we got to see these guys. We got to see these guys, and one of the names he gives me is Derek Trucks. And it took me a couple seasons, 2014, uh, the Wani of 2014. Uh, my buddy Tom Zaroleta from the Florida Times Union. We went to the, uh, it was the ABB, it was the brother's last Wani. Is that correct, David? I think you're right. They're year 45, and that was their last uh, um, Wani. And it was that was their festival. Um, and it was great. It was two nights of the brothers, but it was also my first exposure to TTB and to Government Mule. And honestly, my rock and roll world, which was built in the 80s and late 70s, mid to late 70s, I was Giles and Clapton, and then I still am. But that Wani concert changed me until, you know, present. Um, and so um, that was 33 shows uh, at St. Augustine the other night um 33 shows following them i think 11 venues beacon the most uh but a bunch dotted through my hometown of toledo i'm uh, in florida now um but uh, we're going to talk about toledo before we close i'm gonna <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna give your uh, your your viewers a, a hot tip 
Um, but uh, we'll talk about that later. But I'm really happy to be here. Thanks, Adam. Oh, su super cool. That yeah, that's that's awesome. I, your journey is a little bit similar to mine in the, in the sense that like I was between more or less when the band like kind of formed around 2010 2011 but about the same amount of years give or take and plus i've seen them in the 30s so i kind of have a similar like i could understand like where you're coming from about like getting into the band a little bit more a little bit more and before you know it you're in the in the 30s and, and 40s yeah. with shows what do you remember about do you remember anything about that show like i'm asking what makes this band out awesome as if i don't know but like uh what the what, first show? The, yeah, the slide guitar playing, her voice. What? What? Uh, you know? Those two things specifically, and the crowd engagement. Uh, the crowd engagement was beautiful. Um, they had these. Uh, there was a couple there, and they were walking around with these giant <laughs> heads uh, of, of Derek and Susan. They were walking through the festival. Were you there, David? You're yes, not. I, I did see those people. Yeah, that was so cool. <laughs> that was so cool. Um, uh, but the set list was so strong, and and almost none of the music had I ever been into or had heard, and I was just blown away by the musicianship. It was it was just wonderful. Adam, these cutouts were, I don't know, like I don't know, six, four feet, six, four, feet, four feet, six feet, and they were just like their their heads, their faces. These people are carrying them around. I don't know, on a big pole or something. <laughs> They're just walking around the festival with Derek they and Susan's face. It was they, it was awesome. They weren't paper mache heads. They were actually no, like cutouts yeah, out of no, it was like cut out. Yeah. They had to be tired by the end of the day. These were sizable. These yeah. were sizable. <laughs> you could you could see them from up the hill. Yeah, it was so, pretty oh it was really cool. It was that's that was those just, are collectors items for sure. Yeah. That's I'm looking. Right. I'm trying. I'm, I'm. I'm. seeing if I could find anything. I, you know I'm what? Cool I think you could, if you if you go Wani 2014 out, you might be able to. You yeah. might be able to scope that out. But it is John. I mean, Wani was just the happiest place on earth. If oh. you were a music fan, to go into that venue, yeah. um, and I I only beat John by one year. I was there 2013 for the first time, and that that festival had been going on for a long time. Uh, I think the early 2000s or something. It had been around for for quite some time. But John and I uh, connected, um, I think, in the parking lot of the Daly's place several years ago. And John and I got to uh, uh, to tailgate. And uh, ever ever since the first time we met, every time I've been down to his neck of the woods, we've uh, had a had a nice uh, nice uh, gathering, pre-show gathering. Thank you, uh, sipping on something pretty nice and uh and some uh some great stories and fun and everything and and larry was down there this go round so uh yeah he was uh you know lucky enough to be able to join us and it was i mean we just had a blast before there you go i got yeah. it, there it is. Uh, <laughs> i found it wow I mean, is that not wow. awesome? Is that not awesome? <laughs> wow. And that's 2014. Like, yeah. that's that's yeah. not four albums and 2,500 no. with 76, 550 Beacon shows later and yeah. and playing the White House and Madison Square, whatever it is. Like, they, this is 24. Not that they didn't achieve anything then, but like, you know, they yeah. were worthy of having the, these big heads, you know. Adam, yeah. this has to be well. on you. This has to be your new intro right here. This has yeah. got to be on your intro. I mean, look at that. I mean, is that I thought awesome? Of, yeah, I thought about updating the intro. I have some better <laughs> Kebby quotes also. But this yeah, like, no, this, that, that right there, cool. look at that. I mean, that this is, is like I game mean, day. They wandered around for like three days <laughs> oh carrying God. those around the festival. Yeah. yeah. I got to get these people on the pot, the, the show. Oh, that's, that's Larry's picture from. Uh, yeah from the show but we'll get into that where did you that's say hilarious. You that's but, that is hilarious i i had first of all i had no idea david that you knew john at all <laughs> but, uh -huh. that's, but i'm not i'm not surprised where are you yeah. where did you say you were john you're in florida you said i currently yeah currently we're in florida just outside orlando okay mm -hmm. and how far is that from saint augustine uh it took us about 145 um sure. but uh hour 45 i like to be there couple three four times a year i mean the the acts they get are just outstanding and it's mm -hmm. it's what it's my favorite amphitheater bar none absolutely and one of my favorite venues that i've been to and i've been to a few um yeah so it's a wonderful the acoustics and the setting just perfect perfect i don't know I, i've never i've never really experienced a tailgate like they have there that's you got what the spanish moss trees and stuff and i mean everybody's just tailgate and having a great time just a lot of like-minded people it was just such a great vibe um yeah. and when i came out late john and i you could maybe talk to this we came out late 
to the parking lot by the Elks Club there. And there were people with, you know, campers and stuff that were camping there overnight and everything. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it wasn't always that way. And really, I think some of those Panic and, and Billy String shows, I think the success of those shows showed them something. Um, and uh, so now about the back half of that Elks Lodge, they give over uh, to camping. Um, and then the, uh, the, the AMP parking lot itself uh, is largely members and pre-sold tickets. We, we could have got, had we been sharp, like in its first days, you can get tickets for the event there, parking tickets. Um, we didn't, obviously. Um, but we generally always go to the Elks parking lot anyway. Yeah, it was awesome. Um, I'll tell you, it's a great venue. What a great venue. Yeah. The, the, yeah. As, as John, the sound was great. The stage also, the height of the stage was pretty low. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. it was, I don't know, it's kind of a, a, a good sight line. And um, mm -hmm. the crowd was very, I mean, it was a hometown show, Adam, for, uh, I know we can get into it later, but Susan even mentioned, and I, I certainly didn't know this, maybe somebody else that, I, I take it that uh, Derek was actually born in a hospital in St. Augustine as, as opposed to Jacksonville. She said, <laughs> she mentioned that in the show, that uh, Derek was born in St. Augustine. How about that? Yeah. Uh, which huh. I did not know. I just knew they were from Jacksonville, but that right. was pretty, pretty cool and uh, uh, certainly well received. They seem to be very happy to be in a new venue in the uh, in the Jacksonville uh, area. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I saw they called it a hometown show on their social media, and I pulled up a, a map here. It's about forty miles from Jacksonville. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fifty eight, fifty eight minutes if you take the I two ninety five and the I ninety five. I think I think David subtly makes a point. I think if you're in the Jacksonville market and you like music in that genre, in that in that uh, amphitheater uh, 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 situation, you much prefer St. Augustine over Daly's. Um, oh yeah. The, a day, you know, it take it takes some cement and steel to build every one of these, but when you're at St. Augustine, you really, really feel that you're in the greenery of Florida. You truly are. The surroundings are. It lends right. itself, I think, to the acoustics. The acoustics aren't bouncing around everywhere. Larry, what'd you think of that? Well, that was what I was going to mention, John, is that the fact that the amphitheater itself was built inside a state park, which is a maritime forest that sits you know, up against the Atlantic Ocean. Um, there's a famous lighthouse there. Um, Adam, if you go back to the aerial footage, you could you may be able to see the I believe that's the St. John's River. I could be wrong about that, but in the background, but there's you can see the tree line around and on the back side of it that actually where the photograph is probably taken from the lighthouse. But uh, the to the east of that photo is the Atlantic Ocean, and um, it's a beautiful setting. It's it's all natural. Um, you're actually leaving St. Augustine proper and going onto the island. Uh, and then you're, it's surrounded by restaurants and, and small residential areas. But most of the property before you get to St. Augustine Beach is this state park. And there's um, a lot of amenities around. Um, it's just a beautiful landscape for an amphitheater, which is a great idea. Whoever came up with this concept of putting uh, a musical venue in a setting that you wouldn't think would cater to it because there's absolutely no slope in that area because you're at sea level. <laughs> but uh, um, but the fact that you're encased in these beautiful, low-hanging maritime oaks, live oaks, and as uh, David mentioned, there's moss on the trees. And um, but it's a it's an old growth forest, maritime forest with low shrubs and then the the canopy. So it's not dense. It's, it's a, it's a thin canopy that you can just kind of hovers over the ground. So there's lots of room to spread out and um, with the parking lot is kind of incorporated into the trees. So it really sets the a wonderful venue area for a live concert opposed to like a concrete <laughs> jungle, yeah. like most of the, like dailies and some of the other amphitheaters in the South. 
but I, I would say to those that want to find a, a new destination for a show, don't go there. Don't make the tickets any harder to get than they already are. <laughs> it really ain't that great. It ain't that great. Don't no, they, you know, they tell you terrible. how crappy it was. You're, you're talking no. to three guys that really don't know a good venue from uh, you know from uh, anything else. So don't don't yeah. don't think about coming down there. Yeah, but they're it, well, definitely I mean, coming back again. It sounds like I, I mean so I forty so. minutes from their home. Yeah, we yeah. we ran into a lot of people, uh, Adam, that, uh, you know, we've seen multiple shows with and everybody raved about the staff, the venue, the sound, just the the, you know, the, you know, the the pre pregame, so to speak. And, I mean, yeah. it just I mean, it was you know, we usually don't. Uh, Ann and I don't usually kind of tailgate and everything, but boy, we're we were glad we got there a couple hours early and hung out with uh, with John and Larry. And I do have to say, all three of us did have our better halves with us. Okay, yeah. the the women were in in attendance, and yeah. uh, it was it was a great great time, uh, just just a, a blast from from start to finish. And it was even better to you know spend time with John and Larry before the show made it even uh, even more special. I got the picture yeah. right here. Right. There you go. Yeah. See, the women were there. Very cool. <laughs> Very cool. So, so the gentleman next to Ann is, uh, you've read his work. He writes for the Florida Times Union. He's editor for the Florida Times Union. And he's the one who covers all the shows. And he's interviewed Derek and Susan. Nice. And all, mem all members of the band. His name is Tom Zaroleta. Yeah, I, pro um, I probably bothered him to be on the podcast or about something or tagged him and things. I definitely know the name from this. He's, he's a well-informed individual trust yeah me. yeah and, and he actually mentioned you adam and said he would love to do it but he has a conflict of interest with his employment so as you can imagine <laughs> yeah okay so, okay he's, yeah. A, he's a professional you know he's a professional yeah. i can vouch for that i can vouch for that i will ask him <laughs> questions about his interview i'll you know he'll tell me hey i'm talking to susan on friday so you know friday about five o'clock I'm calling him and saying, okay, well, what'd you say? What'd you say? Uh, I can't tell. You know, you know, so sometimes on. you don't no, want spoilers we've anyway. We've known you know, each other know. for 45 years. And since we worked on the high school newspaper back in Toledo. <laughs> and and I'm like, well, what did Derek say? Uh, you'll read about it. And then we can talk about it afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> He's a true professional. The guy's very, incredible. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. Very yeah. Nice guy. yeah, you got to check out. Hey, you got to check out uh, Larry's shirt there. Yeah, I see. Yeah. Sweet. He's worn it. I think he's worn it on the podcast. That's yeah. wearing it right now. You wearing it right now? No, not wearing it. No, right. no. It's in the laundry. Uh, it's it's been sweated and used and probably right. a little bourbon spilled on it. But it's, it's <laughs> nice. Yeah. <laughs> that. What well, you know? What maybe maybe like there's been some evidence. Well, obviously, uh, David, you've gotten songs played based on your T-shirt, but based on t bringing up songs on the podcast and then hearing them in future shows. Maybe we'll yeah. get a, a sweet and low, and they're probably not going to play sweet and low in Australia. Yeah. Probably not. But Maybe we'll we'll never come back. Never, you never know. What's you that? Never know. Bring Hope, it all hopefully back. One of them, hopefully, one of them with influence maybe is watching your uh, your show tonight, uh, Adam and uh, Larry. Will get his sweet and low uh, later yeah. this year. I'm not going to be mad if I don't get it, but like I think I think we'll get it. We'll get it this year, certainly. I think you know. Fingers crossed. Yeah. No, it's a it's a good one. It's a moment. Yeah. Um, I don't know when we're going to get into the set list. I had a question. Yeah, let's the, do the it. Du the Deuce is Wild algorithm kind of thing. What did you get out of the Deuce Wild at St. Augustine? What two? What paired up? No, nothing. Nothing. Uh, my oh. understanding. Oh, Larry probably knows better than me. My no, I was just going to I was going to say we haven't discussed the fact that there was one set with no opener. Right. Is right. That, is that the first time ever? They, oh, you know, I do, as a, I do have some intel on that, Larry. I know we didn't, okay. we, you know, once. Sorry, not to, not to. No, your no, but once, no, it's a great point. But once we, uh, Adam, once uh, we kind of uh, split up from from our pregame, we all went in different directions. As Larry said, there was no set break, so we couldn't couldn't really hang again once you were in there. Yeah. It was funny as I was, I asked, um, I said to one of the uh, ushers or whatever, I said. Someone told me they had a 1030 curfew here. And she said they do. She goes, they're just going to play one long set. Oh. And that was how I just because I was wondering because, yeah, if they're starting at 730, taking a half hour, you know, break. I was like, wow, yeah. that, you know, what's that going to be for music? But 
they ended up playing like two hours and 35, two hours and 40 minutes straight. I right. mean, that's, that's a little unusual. So yeah. uh, it was, it was I pretty cool. Waiting. I kept waiting. What's, like after a pass I was like, Oh, they're going to break it. They're going to oh, break yeah, it Cause you didn't know. Yeah. You didn't have any. I just happened to ask an usher. So. Yeah. Yeah. I really thought pass was going to be the break and then they went on and. Yeah, too. You didn't know. The the yeah. sort of axiom has always been that, uh, or the trend has been that if it's a weekend show, it's an evening with a double set, and right. if it's a weekday show, it probably have a supporter and a single set. But hey, it was fine in the end. That's for damn sure. I think uh, right. was it you who messaged me, Dave, and said basically that they got put the old people to bed in Florida. Is that oh, kind of is that? You? No, that was not me. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. Who, who messaged? Wow, that was somebody. not me. That was somebody. <laughs> hey, Adam might be one of those old people they had to put to bed. So hey, watch say. that. Watch yeah. that. <laughs> um, no, a lot. Uh, David, why don't you answer John's question though about yeah, the deuces? A, thing. A deuces. So. Not not me coming up with this, but talking to uh, others who are, you know, people watch this stuff and try to figure out and what's going on. Sure, fan created. But, but I, I think what it is, is when they play back-to-back -back shows, two shows in the same venue, one night they play one song, the second night they play another song, and it's the same artist from that same album. I gotcha. So they've only done it twice so far, but I think, I don't know what, the, I think there's seven, eight or nine more where they pair up two nights. I guess the Beacon's going to have a two night in the fall, uh, the one in Brooklyn, um, some others. So I'm, I'm guessing that it's going to happen to me. What's Austin cool now. is I want to know who, you know, Derek or who's, who's picking the two songs and which album and which oh. artist and all. I mean, that's just, I mean, that's pretty deep. So if they're going to do it, you know, eight or nine more times, yeah. I mean, there's going to be some cool stuff coming up, I would say. I mean, who doesn't want to be a fly on the wall whenever I was just going to use Susan the phrase are sitting down know. doing the set list for the night? Who doesn't want to be in I that was just, room? That's my exact thought. Like just to just to, yeah. just to listen to that, not even like contribute. Uh, forget about that. But like just to listen to like that process, because it would be. It'd be probably more relatable than than like it wouldn't be like this. They, it's not like they're speaking a foreign language. They're gonna be like, "What song do you like? I like this. I used to listen to this one. This one's fun to play." That's probably what we'd hear. But who the hell really knows? That's why it's so we're so kind of curious about like being yeah. right there and who's all right. I got. I'll make a documentary about. It. We gotta make a documentary about like this <laughs> their songwriting process, yeah. the road and the and the something about the road and something about the songwriting process, like and. Mm -hmm. the, I mean, those are the two like things. The big things in music is the road and recording. Like, sure. I would love to see those things behind the scenes. We do get we do get a lot of great stuff on social media from from the band for sure. We're giving more like in you know personal stuff with the band and stuff, showing them right on camera. I want to read the yeah. set list for the audio listeners, and then we'll dive into it. Uh, sure. Come see about me. Do I look worried? Feel so bad until you remember circles around the sun. Had to cry, Pasquan. State Trooper and ain't fair into dreams. Anyhow, Midnight in Harlem, Made Up Mind, Just Won't Burn, I Want More. Into Bex Bolero, I Can't Make You Love Me, Soul Sweet Song, and Space Captain. Those last three were the encores. So, yeah, this is like a huge, <laughs> you, you got a big, a big set. It's a mega, big mega big. set. And, yeah. I mean, just, I mean, so many great songs. And I don't think we got any, you know, debuts for the year. I think all of these songs have been, have been played elsewhere. But, yeah. It it just flowed. And I mean, what a, you know, one, two and a half hour, two hour and 40 minutes set. Just, I mean, God, it was, yeah. uh, it was, it was awesome. It was awesome. I know. I did notice right away that there wasn't anything new added, but you know what? It's looking at it now and thinking about it now, like they have a couple of weeks off as they're heading to Australia. Um, it's like, this is almost like a celebration of everything that they've done. Like they deserve to have this one last North America show, a hometown show, just to play hometown show, just to play the greatest hits of the last <laughs> four weeks, yeah. whatever it was. Uh, yeah, Randy's here saying it. It was a conclusion in the chat. They, these guys are yeah. talking about the uh, Terra Nova T. I thought Deuces was over. Now it's summer tour. That's a lot of chips yeah. left. And then Randy's <laughs> saying Cap Boston. Uh, SPAC, Bridgeport, Red Rocks are uh, all he's two excited. shows. He's excited. Good for him. Uh, yeah, yeah, they're still, you know, Deuce as Wild is going all the way through, I think, all the way through yeah. um, uh, the cap. 
I think it is. Um, yeah. I think it's going all the way through that. So, yeah, you saw a bunch of the twos. And, you know, yeah. so it'll be, like I said, hopefully they're going to keep doing that. But, man, this set, yeah. again, I mean, come see about me. I think they only played that once so mm-hmm. far right. this year. Mm-hmm. So that was yeah. – I was really – uh happy to hear that as an opener that was yeah me I too Derek and Susan uh, with the horns in that song Larry it was whew, I was uh, I was off to a damn good start I love that yeah. one I was I want to mention real fast about the set list Adam you kind of touched on it it's kind of like the it's like they pulled the leftovers out of the fridge and made a wonderful meal of, out of the whole tour it's kind of like the byproduct of each run of the you know you know atlantic city and new york and you know virginia and all these other great shows and then they kind of mesh it together into one kind of conclusion where we've got just a little bit of each night that was played on the tour um the one thing i will manage mention is that they did repeat seven songs from uh durham which i was questioning just two like, nights before right just two nights yeah before. like seven of the songs out of the 19 that we see here from Durham and which is kind of odd, but at the same time, I'm like, it doesn't matter. Cause this show from start to finish flows so well. And that yeah. was one of the kind of the things with the, the being there and having one long set, there was no like periods of long, you know, just kind of watching the, the motions go by and every song called followed the, 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 the next one. And we had just, really what was coming next kind of feeling and what would be next. And uh, everything was so played well, so well. Um, yeah. I, I think if you hadn't been fortunate to, to see any of the deuces tour yet, or if you hadn't really followed much, but you, you still wanted to see the band and you saw the last couple of seasons, you saw a lot of, I am the moon justifiably. What I'm about to say, I'm not knocking anything, but you saw a lot of, I am the moon. You saw a lot of high times signs um, and, and, you know, this band, there were this on this night, this band came out and I think did something that was really comprehensive about like what they can do, what they enjoy doing. I mean, it was a great set list that represented their range truly. Yeah. Yeah. And, the and whole, opening the whole up catalog, with, right? Pretty much the whole catalog, only three songs I gave. Is that right? Three from I am the moon. Yeah. The three album <laughs> was yeah. three from I, I am the moon. And the fact that it's also a hometown show and the last show, you know, until Australia and, and they're having a brief time off. It's almost like it has like a here's what here's what we've been up to. Like you're coming home and then like they maybe they had some people who don't get to see TTB as much as some of you guys and even myself, maybe. But they live where Derek and Susan live. Did you get the vibe that there were, it really was like family and friends kind of vibe at the show? Yes, I, yes. I did for sure. Actually, the people next to me, um, like actually two rows away, had a sign. They were bringing a sign in. I was kind of laughing because they're an older couple. Mm. And I say older, I mean, my age, huh? so probably my age, in y'all's age. I'll be 50 this year. Uh, but they I had a have white sign. <laughs> yeah, they had a white sign. I'm like, well, I wonder what that sign says. If someone in his 60s is going to hold up a sign. And block people's view at a, a TTB show. That's going to say something interesting. I'm so curious, like what song could it be? And he opens it. Uh, actually, his wife opens it up and says, "Wheezy says hi." <laughs> I'm like, "What?" Sure. Wheezy says hi. I'm like, "This must be like Susan's babysitter back in, or you know, or somebody, or Derek." <laughs> I someone, see. Yeah. You know. Someone in the family connection that is just wants to say hi to Susan or Derek or whoever in the band and uh, is trying to make a personal connection over a crowd of 4,000 people in the middle of a concert. And it's really odd to me, but at the same time, that's the kind of hometown feel I think it was. David, I saw in the photos, did you get a chance? Was Judy there? Judy Bowman? Yes, yes. Yes, she was. See Judy and Carson. Yeah, we did see Judy and Carson. Awesome, awesome. Um, got got yeah. to meet her on Kofi Day down at the farm, and she's just a wonderful woman. Yeah, we- I wanted to ask you about her because I met her in Savannah in 2019. We sat right next to them. We had a wonderful time. Talked to them. You know, again, an elderly couple. I thought you know it was just there to enjoy the Almond Brothers songs, and I didn't know the connection at all. But 
Can you guys enlighten me more about what her story is? If if, if you can share, yeah. it's, it's a hardcore fan. Yeah, no. Well, Judy, she's she's friends with uh with Derek's parents, Debbie, Debbie yeah. Trucks. Yeah, she's friends yeah. with Derek's parents and Adam. Th this, well, I mean, they are. No one awesome. bother any of these people, please. They are an yeah. awesome couple, and Judy <laughs> yes. and Judy is seventy years young, and can't be not even uh, can't be five feet tall. You wouldn't make her to be a, a fan of the band like this. And she she is up dancing her ass off. She loves it. Yes. She is up and 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 just having the best time. Every time I see her to show, I mean, just having a, a, a great time. I remember we were, and I don't remember where we were. Might have been Daly's place or something. We one of the times we had front row, and all of a sudden I hear I feel somebody elbowing me in the side. And Judy's come up to the front row to dance with us, you know. And I was like, "Come on up here," you know. It was great. So, I would yell at her to sit down. I'd be like, uh, "I don't care yeah. what age you are. You better uh, sit down." No, hey, okay. she's, all, she's only here like, we go. She's only like four foot ten, Adam. You can see right over. She, uh, but that's, yeah, that's yeah. She was a hoot, but yeah, we did did see her. She was seated. Uh, her and her husband were seated uh, near us, and we Very did cool. get a chance to. Uh, to, to visit with Judy and, and Carson. Yeah, it was really nice. Yeah. Very cool. Very yeah. cool. Yeah. I don't have anything to comment on this set list because I think the only thing I've listened to is It Ain't Fair and Dreams, which were both awesome. But uh, Yeah, I had yeah. State Trooper. I recorded State Trooper. Oh, yeah, I got to check that one out too. I, I did not have cell service, uh, John right. and Larry. I, I I went over and asked an usher. I said, is there, you know, I looked up for Wi-Fi and, could find said oh there should be something and there was everything was under lock so i couldn't mm -hmm. do any all of a sudden i look over and my wife ann is using her phone and yeah. i'm like what the heck we have the same service same phone she's got the large version i've got the small version same phone everything and hers oh, she's yeah. getting cell service i'm getting none so towards the end i ended up and i'm going to try to upload it if i can grab it off of her phone um mm -hmm. i i did Facebook Live uh, midnight into made up mine, so right. oh. I'm going to try to try to upload that. I did have State Trooper, and it ain't fair. Somebody else had you it. Did a real nice job. Someone else had dreams. Yeah, yeah, um, cool. yeah. But I don't, I don't think there was. You know, I heard somebody said they thought they saw a taper, but I, I know a lot of times, you know, in Florida and in the, some of the southeast, we don't have the tapers uh, like yeah. they do up north. I don't know why. Um, but we just don't seem to get it as, oh, as much. You ran them out with the Confederacy. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Did, did, no, okay. did, you, okay. did you did you try turning your phone okay, on? Like a Floridian. on? Did you did you try <laughs> turn your try turning your phone on and off? I that I'm I, I'm not I'm not like making a joke. I'm like because that does no, sometimes I, like work. I did, you know. Of course, my wife is yelling at me trying it because I'm definitely oh. technically challenged. Right. Um, yeah. So she said, you know, try turning it off. Try this. Try that. I, I I thought I tried, you know, but actually I enjoyed the hell out of the concert. I didn't, I didn't, I wasn't videoing yeah. much It's of freeing. It, it can yeah, be, it's definitely just, freeing not to have to be. I was, I was, uh, I was, you know, I was digging the music. It was just a great, you know, it was a great mix. Um, I don't know if you have a picture. I, I've got some, but Derek had a really cool shirt on. For yeah, he did. Yeah, strange. You know, broke, he, broke out a little fashion. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Was he did he didn't someone made a, him wear it? <laughs> yeah, he didn't have his. Uh, you know, what do you what do you um flannel is, his flannel, flannel or whatever. Um, right. there you go. If you can zoom in on that. So they're like a fish, right? Was uh, it thought, a, no, like uh, an eagle or something? Like a bird? Yeah, it, it's a bird? Like let, looks like the let me get by kind of. Yeah, kind of something like that. So oh, it was wow. really it was a wrap. It was a wrap around the side and the back yeah. of the shirt. It was, yeah. it was pretty cool. It was. It was and it was, you know, it looking cool. The new the new stage setup is great. Uh, the oh, it's lighting. fantastic. The it's classy and those chandeliers. Of, I love the chandelier effect. I love that backdrop. They, they didn't like move as different. much as when I saw them earlier. They were bobbing and all, and it was a little distracting. I think they've they've not moving them as much, but it it yeah. it would look great. Yeah. There's so many th we've talked about this, David. We don't even know where the hell to look half the time when we're watching the show. So yeah. it's so you definitely yeah. don't one doesn't want we don't and you know, you definitely don't want to have like the 
lighting and all that the what not to be a, a distraction but it, it rarely really is but it but that's a subtle improvement that like not something i was thinking about but i'm like oh yeah maybe not having those move around as much is less distracting and the just first place for- lynn looks is what is uh susan wearing yeah yeah so, yeah for yeah. sure first thing my wife looks at <laughs> yeah always always what is she wearing I- I was appreciated beautiful. her dress. Beautiful I'll, dress I'll just on. go out and I'll go on record and say that I appreciated her dress. And actually, I, I knew she wore it at the Beacon or the Rhine, somewhere this tour. And it, no, it's fat. a very classy dr- dress. It, and I know she shines on her on her variety of uh, evening wear. But uh, this one stands out to me. It has a nice frill going up to the side. It's not my favorite. My favorite is the lemon dress. But... Uh, this one's pretty cool. Yeah, you're gonna be my fashion, uh, fashion, uh, yeah. co- expert, fashion uh, <laughs> analyst, very... fashion, fashion. We need analyst. someone with a little bit more. Actually, wears dresses. You know. No, you just gotta <laughs> know what you're on. talking. No, no, but we that is that is a recurring theme on this on the show is like that how stylish and fashionable and individualistic in their own ways and styles the band uh really is. These are all I think Bradley Strickland took all these. These are yeah, all the she was pictures. she was looking yeah. good. That would I I would say yeah might not have been my favorite, but it's up there near the top. It was it was a very very nice dress. Like I say, Derek was was decked out with a shirt and uh, yeah yeah you know, looked dressed- like they were having a having a good time. Oh, they were smiling and just interactive. And I mean, look at that. The lighting in the like in the yeah. in between the, the, the chandelier things were so yeah. cool. Yeah. I mean, that's just like a white sheet column. And yeah. the fact that they're portraying the thing, uh, colored lights onto it at different tiers, it's it was a nice effect. Yeah. Really liked it. Really mm-hmm. did. It was nice. Definitely. Yeah. You know, back to that set list real quick. Uh, uh, there was a, a cover I'd point out. I've got to believe it's time that Bruce Springsteen starts to ask them if he can play State Trooper. Because <laughs> I, I think they are owning that cover. I really do. Oh, yeah. uh, it, uh, Mike's sort of haunting vocals, bringing in those lyrics, and then the way Falcon and Isaac bring uh-huh. in the beat halfway through. They've got that song seriously down. I love it. Yeah, I wouldn't. I'm I curious what what like Bruce thinks of that, and I really be curious what <laughs> what no like because I think it's amazing. So I they I feel like these artists should like get on the record being like, no, I, I PTB think- is awesome. Like Van Morrison, like what would he think if he heard that Caravan version, which I will not stop talking about. Mm. Yeah, it's cool. From, uh, the other night, I think he dig that State Trooper, and, and he said Falcon at the end of that just. Oh you know, yeah, he, he's. I thought he's he was pretty- gonna break his drum hit head oh just the way he just comes into it like like james law you know yeah or like uh he was he was, just, he, he was he was he was he was cooking he it was that was great and I, to bring ac out front to do uh aretha's it ain't fair ac uh, out front i don't think we've seen alicia out front uh we've seen her in features but i don't recall right. seeing her out front no, not no, by no, herself no. until until it ain't fair. I think I think that's the first. Uh, this no, is the first yeah, time. no one's no one's said otherwise that I've heard. No. That voice I is church. So, that voice is absolute so, church. Yeah, I was so excited that they did this. Uh, I think I called it, David, didn't I? Yeah, they're going to do this, but that I kind of knew it because again, as my earlier comment, this was kind of the kitchen sink of the tour. You know, this was. I mean, this is by far the thing. I'm going to take away from the tour, even with the had to cry and the presence of the Lord and, and the caravan, the into the mystic. I think the it ain't fair dreams combination is wins the, the, the goat of the tour. So it, it's, I mean, this set was a best of, I think of what they've done so far this year. It was a best of really it. Yeah. They, they brought it for, like I, I post on, I said it, they knew how to throw down a hometown party. That's for damn sure. That's right. Yeah. I'm surprised there weren't fire trucks there when dreams played. I mean, (laughs) Derek just absolutely tore it up. I've been fortunate to see a few dreams uh, in those 30 plus shows. God knows how many times our friend David has seen it, but that was, uh, I don't, I don't like to do best ofs, but that was as good as dreams. I'm sure I've ever experienced. That was outstanding. 
it's funny it's more like guess march madness is, is coming up and i'm thinking about like making a bracket of covers like which is your wow. favorite pair because that's oh, what you guys wow. that would be i wasn't great. actually going to i guess i could that would be great Adam. That, that would be... yeah that's this is the kind of stuff that i should be doing that fans are wow. into man, that post make a cool. poll of, of that a march madness of uh, yeah, do a March Madness thing of TTB songs or venues or covers, like a bracket best T- worst venue, Daly's place. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. Wow. <laughs> Bottom wow. No, I'm kidding. Ah, I'm that's kidding. funny. That's yeah. funny. Hey, but John, you made honest. dreams there. Yes. Larry, Larry and I saw dreams together um during yes. the uh, fireside, right? In uh, yep. Charleston, remember? Yes. Yeah. I yep. remember oh, yeah, that was we were sitting, other one I've seen. That was amazing. And we were, I was sitting there and I, you know, you had your little pot or whatever. And over close to us sitting in the field was, uh, was Derek's dad pretty oh, yeah. close to us. Yeah. And but his mom was there too. Yeah. And they just were, looking at him, watching him yeah. when Derek was playing dreams, I, I just got such a, a, a chill. That's cool. Know, watching his dad you know, checking him out doing dreams, which, you know, his dad had seen Dwayne do it, you know, back in the day and all. I just, it was a yeah. really cool, that was a cool experience. You know, I don't know how that version was compared, but it just the experience of, of watching yeah. Chris trucks kind of see his son, uh, I love you know, that. craft that was, that was a cool night there. And, uh, we had a couple of good nights in Charleston and, uh, uh, Bill yeah. Murray was at one of the shows and yeah, he, was, he, was. He, he was, he was heckling the band. For Bill Murray. <laughs> <laughs> when was that? Which show was that? That was the uh, Riverbend show um, in 2021 <laughs> when they started back with the pods. Um, in Charleston. Yeah, he, that, that yeah, the he, he was called. Yeah, he was at Crossroads and he was at like the Eddie Vedder jam that yeah. they did that after like some Chicago show, I want to say it was. Or I something guess he like. has a home there or something, Larry. Doesn't he? Is he yeah, he, he lives in Charleston um, part of the year. I mean, I'm sure he's got homes in many cities, but he's kind of made it a home base for him. He's part owner of the local minor league baseball team and does cameos with a couple of the restaurant um, owners here all the time. And uh, he comes and goes, you know. But, I, wanted, um, I wanted to go up to him and say hello, but I, I didn't have the uh, I didn't have the courage to go up and bother him. Speaking yeah. of speaking of that, Bill Murray and I we go to the same dentist Hi, in, uh, in, in L.A. Yeah. Come say hello, honey. <laughs> I was gonna say Bill Murray and I, Bill Murray and I go to the same dentist in L.A. and I'm like I don't really have anything to talk to this guy, but I've had a few interactions <laughs> with him briefly. But <laughs> like he, but I should be bringing up TTB. I'm, I'm yeah, wearing, you should. Yeah, I've worn the hoodie. I think multiple times, <laughs> probably yeah. all funny. the time. Really, that's 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 funny though. That's funny. That, 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 that bit that you, uh, you got to get him on your podcast, and, Adam. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I right, because he's probably not. That's 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 the thing. Like like I, we were j- partly joking, obviously, but like. Maybe that's something he'd be more interested in talking about music rather than yeah. being asked about Ghostbusters for like the 17,000th oh, time yeah. or whatever. I'm yeah. sure he'd love to talk about uh, uh, Clapton's uh, Guitar Festival and TTB and stuff like that. That'd be awesome. That'd, That'd be, be awesome. really cool. He had yeah, I mean, I get, I like to talk to hardcore. Too. What's that? I was going to say, I like yeah. to talk to hardcore fans. What are you saying, hardcore fans? What are you saying, Larry? I was saying that he attended the Martha Vineyard show last summer also. I think he popped in there. So he makes an effort, you know, wherever he's traveling, if they're in playing, he's obviously a fan. So I don't see why yeah. that would be, un, you know. What are his I'm other favorite pa- What? How many favorite bands does he have? Yeah, who knows? Oh, my I, God. I, may, I don't yeah. know if he goes to, like, we mentioned Eddie Vedder and maybe Pearl Jam, but I'm, like, trying to think. And he's a, he's a Chicago guy, so whatever. Like, mm-hmm. he's probably into, like, Buddy Guy or whatever. I don't know. Yeah. I don't, yeah. <laughs> who knows? That's, yeah, this set list is is awesome. Yeah, I mean yeah. it's there 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 was no uh there was there was no downtime in this set list. You know, I mean no. to me I, I've it. said it on here before, but I mean Susan does a lot of of good ballads, great ballads and stuff, but when she sings until you remember, I mean if that Oof. doesn't if that doesn't get you, I, I'm you know, you don't have a pulse, yeah. man. I mean yeah. that's just David, yeah. you mentioned this in the parking lot. You were upset that they played it in Durham. Yes, you know? I thought. And I was like, get... well, you know, they only play it two or three times a tour. And then all of a sudden, here we go, fourth oh, song in. I was you, very You shocked. and me both, David. You and me both, buddy. I mean, 
Look at the, I mean, you, you got to look at the whole set, but look at the first four songs. I mean, yeah. I mean, the yeah. first four, I mean, yeah. you just, you know, you, you had your money's worth after the first four. I mean, come on. Right. I mean, old school. I mean, do I look, Derek loves, do I look worried in the second slot and uh, his yeah. guitar, I mean, always gets the crowd just going at the end. And Mike oh. on Feel So Bad, I mean. Oh, man. I, yeah. I, mean, I love watching Susan watch Mike sing Feel So Bad. I mean, she gets so into it. She she was dancing and having a uh, she she was having a great time. I I snapped a few pictures. Hopefully, I'll post of of her getting into other members of the band. Um, right, right, right. You know, yeah. Uh, she she was she was into it. She and, when, when Alicia sings, she really, she admires the heck out of Alicia belting it out. Yeah. Um, so it's cool to watch. It's cool to watch that camaraderie. camaraderie. You know, they're not statues at the mics. They're they're right. real people. There's so much humanity in their outstanding performance, and that's what makes it so cool. Yeah, the feel so bad in the third slot got everyone more so on there. They're already standing, but more into it. And you got hoots and hollers across the whole venue, and it's very similar to the version I heard on uh, from Durham, uh, which just you know they have a little bit of extension there on the end, and it's just just rolling and rolling with the guitar and the drum it's just it's like a freight train it doesn't stop mike gets everyone into it with this high-pitched squeals and just it's just a great song and then it slows yeah. down to something that you just you know you're it's powerful for yeah. how powerful ballad and then to pick it back up with the circles had to cry sandwich it yeah, just, so he was somebody was asking, yes, yeah, they did, did go back right, into circles. They did, they did, they did, yeah, yeah, they right. did. Yeah. They went back into circles before it was circles passed. had to cry sandwich. Yep. Yeah, yeah. yeah they the did. last the last three songs, it's kind of like it's really perfect for the end of this little run here. It's like what is what is left that we really, really need to play, like in a sense, like because like Space Captain, it seems to be just from conversations I'm having, like one of the more popular in demand uh encores lately and soul sweet song is essential for obvious reasons and yeah. i can't make you make you love me it's just you know yeah her an essential her an essential an that. essential susan moment in a tv yeah. yeah. show that highlights vocal yeah, essential, her vocal absolutely. essentially but i think an obvious thing that we didn't even really mention i mean other than saying it's the second time they play come see about me and that we all love the song is that it's the first song on their first studio album and they're playing oh, yeah. at their hometown show that so i don't think all of those things combined or an, or an good accident call. either good call yeah, that's a good yeah. call yeah i mean in space captain again kind of uh uh i mean i don't we're, larry's talking i mean i've been listening like you you mentioned adam listening to uh the richmond shows the baltimore sh i mean the, you know I, I had all this jealousy of listening to these great shows on archives and yeah, some yeah. of them on, uh, well done Alex Larry. Yeah. Mixler and yeah. all, I mean, just digging them. And then I was like, well, damn, we, we got one that was, you know, up there and it was two and a half hours and one, we, we didn't have to have it. We didn't need no stinking intermission. Yeah. You know, we were, we <laughs> yeah. were partying right on through, you know, we didn't need no, I had to run through drums to get another drink. You know, it was, uh, I mean, it was, you know, I mean, heck, we hadn't even, and we hadn't even talked about anyhow. I mean, you know, yeah. God, is that such a beauty? But she was up, uh, Susan got, you know, close to the end, edge of the stage a couple of times on, uh, on Space Captain. She's out there and like she had done, you know, hadn't really seen her move towards the front of the stage like that, but she did a, uh, oh, yeah. A couple of times, she, it's low stage, lo low stage, like you said, looking at Larry's picture. Yeah, you there. see, yeah, yeah, it was a kind of a low, which was, I don't know, it just it seemed to make it even more intimate. Uh, yeah, definitely to me. This is it's, this it's, is it's exactly how awesome the crowd video. was all night long too. Everyone was on their feet for the most part. I, I had a s section with me that were mostly kind of partially sitting and standing uh, throughout the course of the evening, you know. And I don't, we don't need to talk about the sit stand thing, but the the concept I went with with all night long was that slow songs I sat down so everyone could enjoy it. The more upbeat songs I stood up and danced. Yeah, and I only got a couple down in fronts, but I just let it go and I kept dancing. I mean, nice. there was a guy in front of me that was like seven two, and I was like, okay, if this guy's gonna stand up. I'm definitely standing up because I can't even see the stage. Let's sit on but, his uh, shoulders. Yeah, yeah, he was <laughs> Goliath. Pit but, was uh, rocking. Pitt was rocking for sure. I mean, it, 
Who's making those comments, Adam? That's Who that's that? that's Randy. That's Randy. That's, that's <laughs> Randy. All right. Hey, that's Randy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Randy. On, but we've been on before, Randy. Good I forget. Hey, Randy, yeah, I, might I, be I forget right who, about the live recording. You know, you know, there might have been a reason why there wasn't any recordings. They may be releasing this one. I think Randy's on to something. He mentioned. Well, that. they need to. Oh, oh, well, maybe because that maybe that's even why that's really why it's no debuts of any uh, things on the tours because yeah. they're recording it. But wouldn't you see equipment in the house? Just from the soundboard, I don't know. I, I I don't. I guess I maybe you're saying audio placed around the thing or yeah, just I don't know. Yeah. yeah, I don't. No, no. I tell you, when they did when they did go off and they were come back for the encore, um, I saw Ann turn around. A lot of people had their phones lit up. I mean, it was yeah, that was a cool shot. I just turned around and saw that. I was like, wow, that was just that was really cool. I mean, it it was a beautiful crowd. It was a beautiful crowd. It was. Yeah, I mean, but there were a lot. I know Derek's parents were there. Um, His son, I I know, I kind of caught a glimpse of his son, uh, his Mm. brother. Uh, David uh, yeah. was there with his family, so I'm sure there was a lot of family, and I'm sure oh, yeah. friends uh, that were there to, uh, you know, to to see them uh, Saturday night. I wanted to comment on something you said, David, like 35 minutes ago, because no one's ever really met. I don't think anyone's ever talked about it exactly that way. Was the because we've all, a bunch of most of us have met have met Der, Derek's dad and said hello and talked music with him or whatever, but not no one's really commented on like what it feels like to watch him watching the the band, even if just momentarily in, in, in a not creepy way, obviously. And it just like you'd enjoy anyone who's enjoying something else, it's just this sort of a shared experience thing. But how special that is to watch him watching his son all these years later, like still oh, yeah. totally, totally engaged in the music as much as we all are and loves it as much as we all are. And he's expressed this in conversations, I'm sure with all, probably all of us over the years. So that that's so cool. And I always think of course, my dad as well. And just like music being passed through the generations, but especially as you hear you telling that story. So it makes me feel like, again, that's like why I'm doing this podcast is because I can't be at every show and I can't be watching everyone watching yeah. the band and, and know what's, awesome. what's going on. But just like that, carrying that story, like is almost like a little bit goosebumpy, like, Goosebumps E. Goosebumps well, you know, you, what, you, I mean, what you was see, the, what what song were they what were they playing at the time? You know, you? when when you see him sometimes, uh, you know, up on stage or whatever, right side stage, you see him. But this time he was, you know, he was sitting kind of down in the field because it was the COVID thing, and he was sitting kind of down yeah. in a chair in the grass. I was know? actually, was just, I was right next to him, and because we actually had tickets backed by the soundboard, but it was obstructed view, so they moved us up to the stage believe it or not and there was a set of chairs i guess for family and friends and they were the only ones there in this section because it was you know it was during covid and there wasn't a lot of family and friends around and they were just sitting there and i think i have a photo of like you know, they both have the very long straight hair from their rear and it's a picture of derek on the screen oh playing man i love dreams to see. that's awesome and I, I remember having this conversation with you, Adam, about the same thing and like how what a proud moment for a father to be witnessing your son, you know, Absolutely. which he, I'm sure he's obviously he's had this moment since Derek was probably five years old. But, you know, to be able to sit there and orchestrate a song that, you know, it's your brother and, you know, it's just your family is rooted upon and right. it's such a deep and it's in the blood and you see it coming out that way. It should must be outstanding moment it's like something i can only think of like watching your son become an olympic athlete and get a gold medal or something yeah. like that you know right and right. he lo- and he and he loves the again he just like i get the sense that he of course because he like he grew up on the Almond brothers himself and all that but he loves the music as much as we he all does. do and it's a fan yeah in the same way that we all like really are and i've talked to him about other music and like obviously it's all apples and oranges it's stupid to compare and contrast but i'm pretty sure ttb is like his you know favorite music out there and it's not just like this is my son's band or anything like that it's not yeah. my son's band who played almond brothers songs sometimes or whatever like he like you like you're confirming that like that's what this is all about is like david confirming that like how much of a fan of the music that chris trucks really is, really is beyond just being proud of his son which is so right. cool too to see yeah play itself out yeah well um yeah it's cool i wanted to mention adam if 
if you can you scroll back to the photo of the venue without people in it, just the empty hey, seats. While my, you're scrolling, my, Wiki, my Wikipedia photos. Something? Hey, Larry, yeah. John, it, <laughs> Go I ahead. just want to say something. I, yeah, I've bud. been fortunate enough to be on a few of Adam's podcasts. Yeah, this is the most fun one ever. Okay, <laughs> well, and that's because I and doing it with you guys, man. This is oh man, this is well, awesome, man. This is this you're, is you're the most fun yet. So, you're setting us up to go to a show together next. Man, so we're, gonna, we're gonna have well, to. Well, it helps that you guys it. just. It helps. It helps. I think that you guys just saw each other, have a rapport, yeah. know each other, get along. Oh, yeah. Something yeah. Maybe happened. I'll send you that frequent traveler number. So when you book maybe, the tickets, you got it. Maybe, okay. maybe next year yeah. we'll invite Adam to tailgate with us. What do you think? There we go. I, I, well, I want to point out. Let me interview him. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get you in there, Adam. We'll get you in. Yeah. There. I wanted to point out just very quickly how much the crowd was having fun the the space between the seats as you can see is the the aisles that uh like right at the the end of the tent area is like a walkway and it, like you enter in and out of the venue that way and go to the concessions that area was full of dancers and i just <laughs> imagine like a grateful dead concert or you know back in the 70s or the or a fish or widespread panic concert there cool. are people been there bopping and dancing and yes. i know you guys probably didn't see that up in the front but i had to run to the restroom a couple of times grab a drink or two and it was like weaving in between people and the ushers and them all let that area get filled up with people and i you know during pacifon and drums people were you know spinning and having a great time i loved it and i was like this is a vibe i haven't seen at a ttv show, show ever you know i've been well, to well said that is I've, awesome. I went to, and I, again, it does not has nothing to do with the sit stand thing. But I've been to a concert, particularly one in Dallas, where you could hear a pin drop in that audience between songs. It was so quiet, you know, no one was making. It was like watching a movie. People this were is the kind audience. of experience they could yeah, look at that crowd they behind could gamble it. on this being a destination concert. It, this is me out on a limb, and book a weekend there. And yeah. it's St. Augustine, Florida. This they yeah. could gamble on this being a destination concert for them, dude. They need, need to. They need to do we were talking. We were, we were. Yeah, we were talking about doing like it started to like let, like the PTB does has done festivals that are centered around other bands, types of music, ideas, whatever it is. Like, but they haven't really done their own like two day, three day, whatever you want. Even no, longer. they did the one day thing in 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 St. Pete. What was Saint, that? Yeah. St. Pete and Boca. It's yeah. called the Sunshine Music Festival. Right. They did it for about five or six years in the teens, uh, pre-COVID. I think 2018 or 19 was the last one. There was a time. And they, they had were, and they yeah. headlined and booked everyone them, themselves. They had two stages, 10 to 12 acts, uh, one day. They did it like on the Saturday. They did it in Vinoy Park, which is uh, on the Tampa Bay on the St. Petersburg side on the Tampa Bay. Uh, by the Dolly Museum. And then on the Sunday, they were down in Boca. Uh, Misner Park was the place down in Boca. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it was these 10 or 12 acts doing both shows, both both days. Um, Grace Potter, uh, 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 Mavis, Mavis Staples, uh, yeah. Bruce Hornsby, um, North Mike Mississippi Gordon All-Stars. Uh, yeah. Just tons of good acts. Um, I miss it. I genuinely miss it. They did it in January on uh, it was typically on Martin Luther King weekend and uh, right. it was a great time. It was a great time. We did it several years on the trot and it was a great, great time. Those yeah, are always good they shows bring because it back. They, they open up the year. It was always the first shows of the year. That's right. That's right. Well, John, yeah. are you going, are you going to Miramar? I'm afraid I'm not. No, we thought about day trip and especially for the uh, Sunday with Blackberry. Yeah. yeah, Saturday, Saturday, Blackberry. Yeah, Saturday's Blackberry. Over. Yeah, you need to come yeah. over Saturday. You need to come well, over when you get an opening. You let me know. Okay, all right. <laughs> when we right. start selling single tickets, I'll go. How about yeah, that? that's what you need. You know, that's yeah. what you need to do. Hey, you have a villa there. Um, we we just got a we just got a room. We're not staying on the on site. We're staying. You we'll know, talk little, offline if I can yeah. get something going. Yeah, we need yeah. to get you over there. Thanks, buddy. Yeah. Hey, not, Adam, we want to that picture of Kofi back real quick. Of uh, Kevy? Oh, sorry, Kevy. Kevy. I'm, I said Kofi. Duh. That's your hat. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, it goes into my question. Does anyone know if 
That is Kofi's flute. I, I thought that's what you were going to ask. I don't. Uh -huh. know. <laughs> that is a question that has been asked. I, I kept thinking, what an homage for him to play the uh, the flute and in intro to Swo Soul Suit Song, and he's been doing it in Idle Wind. It's it's a wonderful thing. I'm so proud that he's doing it, and um, I'm sure he doesn't yeah. care what we think, but he, I, I I'm Very guessing funny. it is because Kofi's flute. Yeah, I, that would certainly make sense. That would make sense. I. Certainly, I don't know the answer to that. That would be cool. Yeah. That would certainly yeah. be cool. That would uh, this, be really cool. This photo is awesome. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, it really is. <laughs> yeah. Damn. Like when I use him in on these photos, you don't lose resolution. You get more, yeah, that's more awesome. uh, description. Just seeing the little lines on this flute. I, I, I was kind of not really, but sort of searching for some an inscription on the flute itself yeah. or any sort yeah. of. Oh, uh, right. Yeah. We could try yeah, to we find need to take a out. deep dive on that. You know, we we <laughs> talked earlier about in. features. Ask we'll... Tom. Ask your friend Tom. Find, oh, yeah, Tom will find out. <laughs> well, he won't tell me till the article comes out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Somebody can reach out to Bobby T's and I'm sure they'll let us know. Yeah, but, that, uh, yeah. That's right. You know, that's a good idea, Larry. That's a yeah. good idea. So we see features out of Kevy. And we see features, we see great features out of Lizzie. My God, how the crowd goes nuts when yes. lizzie has got a feature. Uh, we don't see many features out of Ephraim. No. Wish He's I knew. Wish I knew. Number of all. Getting a little Five bit, a little bit of that. Yeah, I wish I knew. Um, he had a little bit on um uh what was the uh the cover they did? Uh they broke out last year, kind of the uh kind of jazzy um Mr. Oh, uh, um, Mr. Clean? Mr. Yeah, Mr. Clean. Mr. Clean. He got a little yeah. bit on oh. Mr. Clean. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. 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 A little bit. Not as. Yeah. Not as much as probably as the other two for sure. Like to uh, see more, but you know, yep. there's only one ball on the true. field. And there's twelve of them. That's right. I that know. is right. It's, and now, you see, you see this poster it... behind me, guy. You yes. see the Ann bought me that poster of. Uh, we framed that of Derek. Uh, that's. that's pretty I think cool. that's a pretty cool one. I. I I'm cool. very proud to have that hanging in my house. Good nice. for you. That's cool. Yeah, that's I think cool. that's a kind of a cool uh, little something there. Yeah, John, what's that poster with the wave behind you? It looks familiar for some. Uh, that that was Wheels of Soul. Oh, you've got a beacon one over there on the right. I see. Uh, that's shovels and rope. Shovels okay. and rope, and uh, uh, yeah, there's a, there's a beacon up there. Up there Sa the, uh... Science has similar wave imagery as well yeah that's maybe what that's it what it's yeah. conjuring i got grace potter up there i got dave oh, Grohl up it. there i got ginger baker up there nice mm. nice Good. yeah that's my uh wall ginger baker you got ginger to see baker him? yeah wow i wonder if he'd be impressed with that had to cry <laughs> probably would yeah. he, probably he probably would, would have yeah i mean yeah. that to me was my first and so excited to see it because you're know, not to mention that that again, that I'm so happy they continued to do that the rest of the tour. But yeah, you know, I love that little groove. I think someone mentioned in your earlier podcast that there's a little groove and and when they're about to do the transition, yeah, Derek's just strumming the rhythm of of the of the intro. And yes. It's like a ch -ch 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 -ch, and the whole band's kind of building it up and then yes. it drops. You know, it's really cool. Yeah, no, I love that. The, I love that moment because we got. I heard it. Uh... Where did I hear it? By one of the shows. Or you heard, they, or you heard the beacon. You heard the beacon. Heard but the beacon. but yeah. they also yeah. played it again uh, since that, then this non-recorded show. But it's funny to hear you uh, talk about uh, Ginger Baker. I can't help but think about my dad like being – he was like a huge and is like a huge – like cream fan and ginger baker fan you didn't have much that. time to be a cream fan they didn't give you much time but <laughs> right, right, right but we were lucky to at the fox shows in atlanta get a ch chance to talk to falcon after i think it, it was in between the, the, the shows and That's my cool. dad mentioned that like that was like giving him like thoughts of ginger baker watching falcons playing and oh, for my wow. dad to say that that really means means a lot because he doesn't throw yeah. around compliments you know to anyone he's a pretty hardcore you know music fan music buff like that's himself. Cool. and he's been on the podcast too of course like talking about this stuff talking about cream we mostly talked about uh him going to the film maurice because that was really his like oh, thing yeah oh, there's a picture of him at the live at the film maurice like in the, like at the final show i believe i believe so so he saw uh, giles too 
<laughs> whoever, you know, like, excited about <laughs> whoever was there episode 70 I'll, there's, yeah. i posted a clip there's a picture of him i i zoom in on it him like standing up like clapping like in the middle of the oh, audience in the at audience the yeah at the all right. brothers that's cool that's yeah cool. Hey, that's so cool hey john i was not a i was not a uh a big jay giles fan you know growing up in the 70s yeah. i'll tell you i was uh, at high school, I was out on a either Friday or Saturday night with my girlfriend. Mm. We were at Chastain Park here in Atlanta, big famous park. We were we were sitting in the car listening to music, and an ad came on. Jay Giles at the Fox Theater tonight. We we drove the car down to the Fox, went in and just bought tickets and saw Jay Giles. And I'm telling you, it was a freaking party. <laughs> How intense were they live? Oh my man. God, it was. Peter, well, it was, it was, I was a fan after I didn't really yeah. know him. I came yeah, out of wow. there like, boy, did they, <laughs> they, 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 whew, they, they yeah. rocked my world. It was, it was awesome. That was only time I ever saw him live, but it was amazing. Five I Jewish wanna, guys. I want to know what New show Jersey. you were trying to, yeah. Huh? I want to know what show you were at the Chastain and you had to leave to go to see the No, Fox. we were, we were, we were just, uh, we were just, oh. you know, oh, uh, you were parking. Parking. Yeah. We were okay. Parking. Okay. <laughs> at, at the, the old seventies park parking. I yeah, see. We're looking yeah. for something. We we're looking for something to do on a Friday or Saturday. Right. Night. Right. It, it's as uh, ad comes on for a concert on the, on the, you know, I, I, so not hard to believe Dave Flam just jumped at some live music when he had an opportunity. Yeah. Right. So <laughs> right. You know. they should be on, they should be on my bucket list now that I like, I'm not a, like, I don't know the catalog front to bottom, but I do enjoy their music and, and it pops oh, yeah. up on my Spotify and all that. And like, you they have a lot of great Giles? music. You yeah. talking about Jay yeah. Giles? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at the look at the two live albums. Uh, blow your face out. Obviously, yes. is a big one, but Full House, Full yeah. House is prime Jay Giles. And if you can get into those two, and I think you will, uh, don't worry so much about like after Centerfold. And I mean, that's yeah, really yeah. when they start right. to jump the shark. Eighties. There's seventy stuff. 80s, right. Their seventy stuff is prime, yeah. prime stuff. Right. Um, they New Jersey, uh, New Jersey garage party rock. Uh, yeah, yeah, it was, it was uh, what, what they call themselves, like five Jewish guys from Boston playing black Southern rhythm and blues rock. And it's truly what they were, the funk. They, you know, rhythm and funk kind of rock. Ain't nothing but a party. They were, the, yeah, truly, hey, nothing but a house party. They were Boston-based. They all come out of the Boston area. They considered Detroit their rock and roll ho hometown. I thought they were from New Jersey. Uh, they're Did from I... Boston. They're from, they're oh, Boston-based. Wow. Yeah. Um, and they consider Detroit their hometown. In fact, I think we could look this up. All of their live recordings, all of their professional live recordings, were recorded in Detroit, not in wow. Boston. It's uh, yeah, they they would come around the Midwest a couple times a year, and the little mm -hmm. Toledo Sports Arena where I grew up, the little Toledo Sports Arena, five thousand seats, would be packed, and there was no air conditioning, be hotter in hell. But oh my gosh, you know, Jay got like like you said, David, Jay Giles on stage was just incredible. Just incredible. Wow. He was from New Jersey, but the band and their music and all that, I that, think that could be true. Yeah. That could yeah. be true. Adam's yeah, they might... he's, he's Googling it while you're talking, John. Of course. Yeah. It. Of course. <laughs> he's on it. Adam, man. He... Yep. He's, not, he's not the host for nothing, you know. He's not the host for <laughs> nothing. <right>? He's, he's, <laughs> he's the only one. I just want to make sure I'm not crazy. I just, I just don't want to get things wrong. You know? Hey, yeah. John, that's a not good opportunity to transition. Somebody's got a transition to your tip. Toledo story. Oh, you see, well, you see yeah. If we still have people interested out there, uh, listeners, uh, hopefully, um, oh, yeah, yeah. you want to find yourselves a great show. Everyone's talking about ticket availability and price and all this. Yeah, it's a Wednesday, but you got to look at Wednesday, August 7, the Toledo Zoo Amphitheater. Toledo is an underrated town for spending a couple days in. The zoo is great. The zoo is world class. They get traveling exhibits. They had the Chinese pandas. The zoo is world class itself. And then the amphitheater, it's like a WPA project. It's, it's all stone. Um, it's a genuine amphitheater, like you can picture the symphony play shows there in the summer also. Um, it's open air. That's the downside. Wednesday, and it's open air. There's no covering whatsoever. But it's like $49.50 plus bastard fees, $74.50 plus bastard fees. My buddy Tom Zarletta, we're both native Toledoans. 
Uh, so we're jumping up there to see some old Toledo folk and check out this show. We're in the pit for $99 plus bastard wow. fees. And all of those sections are still available today. While wow. you're in Toledo, you can visit, if you watched MASH, you can visit the Paco's restaurant where Klinger would, would talk about going back home to Toledo. You can visit the Paco's restaurant. The world famous Toledo Mud Hens are in town at the nationally ranked uh they are and and their stadium fifth third field is a great great minor league ballpark they're a great attraction if you're into museums the toledo museum of art is world class i should be the freaking mayor of toledo what am i doing I'm, here? I'm, I'm just hoping that the ticket scalpers aren't listening to this because they're jacking the prices up to <laughs> yeah the there goes the hotel rates <laughs> everyone does know the mud heads if you follow baseball yeah you the recognize, mud, the toledo you mud recognize toledo mud. it's almost like the stock minor league team if you're like what are you going to go play for the Toledo? Mutt? It's all, yeah. it's like yeah. the stock minor yeah, league next team. to the Durham Bulls. They're yeah. right, there, yeah. right. Yeah. Right. If you're a sports uh, fan, when it doesn't, isn't the mud ends, they also have an amazing hockey team, the Toledo walleye. Uh, they play downtown and Toledo is a well-kept secret at this point for, if you yeah. got a layover or, you know, you got to do business there. If you're, Want to get a couple days in with the family? Right down the road is a famous amusement park called Cedar. How long Point. of a drive is that from Atlanta? I got to look that up, John. <laughs> Ten, oh, hours. Ten hours. Ten Ooh, hours. Ten hours. Yeah. Man, I we did hey. we did six and a half on Saturday to get down to St. Augustine. So I don't know. We yeah. you know we're pretty freaking crazy, Ann and I. I don't know. She, you know, I do have to say. All right, I'm going. Larry and John. It was Ann's a hundredth show. That was her hundredth show yeah. in in, uh, in St. Augustine. She hit. A hundred. She's just a couple behind me, you know, and uh, yeah. that was her hundred. So it's pretty exciting. And they, <laughs> she got to spend it with you guys uh, out front yeah. with your wives and everything. It made it a, a super special night, guys. Thanks, Thank you. Yeah, it was cool. great. Thank you. Yeah. Thank is that you. a standing pit in Toledo? That is a standing pit in Toledo. Okay. Oh, that's <laughs> wow. even better. That's even Am I going to see you there, better. Adam? Am yeah. I going to see you there? <laughs> I, I don't know about that. I don't you take a direct flight into Detroit. You're a one hour down to Toledo. Boom. Okay. It's easy. What date yeah. is that? Wednesday, August 7. Wednesday, August 7. Okay. Yeah. It's okay. going to be hot as hell, but I'm sure it'll be, you know. I'll bet that house isn't half sold. Last time I looked at the ticket map, I'll bet that house really? isn't half sold yet. Yeah. Wow. Oh, isn't there a, uh, there's a, a zoo amphitheater in Cincinnati as well, isn't there? <laughs> uh, Somewhere I, I else. It's not, uh, Cincinnati's coming. River Bend. <laughs> yeah. Toledo it is. Toledo it is. <laughs> Hey. Randy. Dude, well, he's, he's the serious. Tour, Randy, right? I thought he was doing the whole tour. Hey, hey Randy, yeah. and, and yeah. John, John will hook you up with pretty good uh, pregame entertainment too. So <laughs> yeah. I'm speaking for yeah. John. He, we're he, working uh, that out. You can imagine how big that's going to be with Tom and I going home for a couple oh my of days. Gosh. You guys are going to have a hell of a time. There's a few folks interested in getting together pre-show. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. And We'd love awesome. to make you a part of it. That is such awesome. a such a good community. Whether you're into the smoking the stuff or drinking the craft beers, so much so much fun pregame, postgame to go around. Anything yeah. else you guys think we need to cover or talk about from the show from the weekend? It's cool to have you guys on. That you guys already had like a, a camaraderie and all that, and it was cool even last show to introduce people who are now young guitar players yeah. uh, who are who are connecting through the podcast. Like that's cool too. So it's like just fun for me to be a, even a tiny conduit between between different fans uh this is just just fun for me to feel a part of things i love that chris truck story and and all the details about the venue and talking flute and all that. i was looking at random pictures but yeah thank you guys anything else you, you we need to 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 i, I want to i need to say thank you falcon thank you falcon <laughs> i know he listens sometimes thank you falcon thank you falcon that's all i gotta say we have to talk david yeah. we have to talk buddy yeah, thank yeah. you. Uh, I appreciate you, gentlemen. I appreciate it again Saturday night. Adam, thank you so much for including me. Oh, in thank you. Oh, nice to connect. Nice Adam, to connect. Always, it's... always a pleasure. Always a pleasure. Yeah, fun to connect with the with the returning guests and connect with new ones, and hope to have them on again and and continue to, to recap more shows. There's, I need to be re doing more more outreach, like because because they added like all those dates. They're going to be back from Australia soon, and then I'm going to be like, yeah. who's coming on for what episode? But like, I feel overwhelmed because. They get when they get to the road, it gets tough, tough to keep yeah. up with them. But I want to try. I'll talk yeah. to Tom Zarletta and find out more about this. Uh, this uh, no, I, it's all good. I, I mean, I respect everyone's like yeah. privacy, and not everyone wants to be a public figure. Like, 
people yeah i i get it i get it there's a handful of people from the whole tt world that have said many kind words behind thank you no yeah and yeah. support, yeah, and support what I do, but like you know, <laughs> some some people are afraid they'll say. Too I was, was going to recommend Bradley. <laughs> I think Bradley would be. A he was, I did speak to him. I should have him back on yeah. though. Certainly, yeah. Yeah, yeah I am. Um, he he's so nice. You bump into him when he's taking photos. He takes great photos, and he's yeah. Yeah, yeah. We he's, so, he's so nice. And in you know, he very much doesn't get in your way. You know, he's always asking him about you know. If you're near the front or whatever, he takes great photos and he's doing a great job. He's really added a lot to, uh, I think, to the experience there. And uh, I know some people did the, uh, I, we didn't do it, but what the the backstage with Bobby and heard some really great things. Some people mm-hmm. posted some stuff of, uh, about that having a having a blast doing that. So I you guess never I, know who you're going to see backstage when you get yeah, that. See, with Bobby, yes, that's Susan true. Or Derek sometimes yeah. pop their head out on those. Yeah. We've been, it's been confirmed, but thank you yeah. again, guys. I appreciate it. Randy is coming to Toledo. It sounds like I, so, I would take him at his word for that. Uh, yeah. A great episode. You guys are all TTB all-star hey, team. Hey, what is, this, big is, this is the old, roster. this is the old, old farts take on TTB. That's what this is. You don't have <laughs> yeah, any, yeah. we don't have any of those young whippersnappers. These are the old school guys that know right. good freaking music played by great people. Yeah, that's right. The, what he's saying is the we got the old people on to recap the Florida show. <laughs> yeah, there oh, we man, go. I'm, I'm going hard at the at the, the with the ages oh, and the state state ism state dash ism. Both of my adult show. children are TTV fans. Uh, we're going to be at the uh, Armory in Minneapolis Legend. on August second before I go over to Toledo for August seventh. Both of my kids have seen TTV multiple times, so. They can cross generations. Oh, they definitely yeah. do. It's. I think the oh, real yeah. thing is just to be exposed to it more than anything, no matter what your background or gender or where you're from or your age, whatever it is. Like once yeah. you kind of like get into this music, at the very least, you're going to respect it. If not, like become an insane maniac trying to fly to Toledo for shows. Hey, um, hey, 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 well, hey, hey! <laughs> <laughs> I was making fun of Randy more than you, but yeah, <laughs> for all of you guys, <laughs> certainly. Thank hey. you again, guys. I appreciate it. No let's uh, let's 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 uh, reconvene soon. I'm sure this summer, this spring. Thank yeah, you, gentlemen. I'll see you in Nashville, David. Absolutely great to see you, John and Larry. Adam, you're the best. Both of you same. Thank, Thank you. you. Cheers, guys. Thank you. Later. Thank you so much. Good All night. Right. Peace. Later. So there you go. What was that? Episode 147, recapping uh, Tedeschi Trucks Band in St. Augustine. What a fun show! I it was almost like we're unpacking. Like, what is this show all about? Why do they do one set? Why do they do? all these repeats why did they you know and then we kind of figured out that you know with randy in the comments saying it was like a conclusion show a best of the tour so far and a celebration of of t- the tour and uh and a homecoming and a hometown show and all that so it was super cool to to dig in and we got that you know whole vibe from the conversation with you know all the references to 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 papa trucks and the whole family and friends vibe of the show so yeah, I I was there. I feel like I was there. I'm pretty sure I was I was at that show, and I've only heard uh, two songs from what I have need to hear State Trooper as well. But hope everyone's doing okay out there. Uh, please follow the show at Tedeschi Trucks Podcast on Instagram. Subscribe on whatever platform you listen to podcasts on. Subscribe on YouTube. Uh, positive reviews are appreciated as well on Apple Podcasts. AdamChoit.com for my stuff. Tedeschi Trucks Podcast.com uh, for all things related to the show. I'm at Adam Choi to Instagram. And Twitter, if you'd like to follow me. Did I say that already? I don't know. I'm going up and down my list here. TedeschiTrucksBand.com. That's the band's official website. Um, check that out. Buy merch. Buy tickets to upcoming shows. There's more of them coming this summer, spring, summer, when they get back from Australia. I got to look at the schedule and dig in on that. But thank you to the band. Thank you to the crew. Thank you to Randy and everyone watching in the chat and whatnot. Fans are appreciated. Um, I appreciate the support, but I think that's about all I got for today. Um, more coming soon. Let's uh, talk soon. Peace. Peace.